Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Donna, and for those of you not new, thank you so much for continuing to come back and support me. Today we are doing the next installment in my palette roulette series in which I let an app choose a palette for me to use throughout the week, and then I come back to you at the end of that week and tell you what my experience was with that palette, review it just a little bit with you, and show you some swatches and some looks that I created, and then pick a new palette. Last week, my app chose this palette for me. It is the BH Cosmetics Royal Affair palette. This is what the palette looks like. And you open it up, and it looks like this on the inside. It does have a really nice mirror on it, which makes it easier for application on the go, or if you are interested in using a mirror instead of your vanity mirror to apply your makeup. It did get a wee bit filthy, as you can see. This palette does have 20 shades in it, and it does cost $18 retail, and the only place I was able to find it was Riley Rose. So right now it is on sale at Riley Rose or on eBay. Uh, eBay is costing you between $14 and $15 for the palette. It's not for sale at Ulta that I could see. It's also not for sale anymore on the BH Cosmetics website. I think it was a limited edition palette, but I'm not sure. On all the websites that I did see, it was a 4.3 star rating, but there weren't very many reviews, so I don't know if that matters to you. At most, I saw 23 reviews. I said, in the, I, I think, in the least amount was, I think, eight reviews, and that was the highest rating of 4.8. Like I said, it does have 20 shades in it. It is a vegan, cruelty-free, and gluten-free palette for those of you out there that struggle with finding gluten-free brands. I'm talking to my friend Marin, who needs gluten-free. Uh, there are 12 mattes, 7 shimmers, and 1 duochrome, which is this one right here, which kind of appears in your screen as a, uh, like, white... I think it looks white to me, but in person it actually looks kind of like a really pale, like baby blue. This is a cool tone palette for the most part, which surprises me that I liked it as much as I did because I'm not really into cool tone shades. The mattes, for the most part in here, blend super effortlessly. They are really, really super creamy. And the shimmers are also super creamy, but they blend a little bit... Mm, they do take a little bit more managing to get them blended out, and they work far better with a wet brush than they do a dry one. But with that being said, they still have a lot of fallout. Can you see the ice cream mat? This is a mostly neutral palette. You won't be able to create a whole lot of different looks with this palette because it is mostly neutral. But you can get some really pretty smoky looks out of it. I did create a really pretty smoky look with these two colors here. This really pretty burgundy shimmer here and this pretty burgundy matte down here. Uh, but I forgot to get a picture of it. I'm so sorry. I was doing a lot of networking that day and recruiting and was just up, got my makeup done and out of the hotel before I remembered to take a picture. And then at the end of the day when I was taking the makeup off, I was like, Dang it, I forgot to get a picture. So, my bad. Another look I created really, really wish I had gotten a picture of was with this taupe here, which we'll discuss in a little bit. This dark brown here, and then it was this, this shimmer here, which doesn't look to be much, but was so super pretty. So, so super pretty, and I just put that all over the lid, and it was just so so pretty and I forgot again to get a picture of that. So some cons about this palette. The taupe that I was just talking about is a color of invisibility. It wears itself a little invisibility cloak. It swatches really well. You'll see that in the swatches, but when you put it into a, a look, it doesn't really do anything for the look. It just kind of really disappears on your skin. These uh, three darker shades even this one to some extent, but these three darker shades specifically blend like crap. They, uh, they don't blend for poop. 
you have to put something over the top of them to blend with them and even then you struggle bus it to get them blended to perfection. I did an eye look with this green that I think I have a picture of that I will try and place in here uh, that I tried to put that taupe over the top of to blend it out because it just wasn't blending. It looked really patchy and that's really when I noticed that that taupe was really the color of nothing because it didn't help whatsoever in blending that green out and it didn't lay down any pigmentation whatsoever. <laughs> I was like, did I, I looked at my brush like four different times to make sure that I got the color on my brush and I did indeed, it just didn't help at all. So it was an eye look that I thought I was going to have to take off. It turned out okay, but it was an eye look that I really thought was going to need to come off because it was just not working out so hot at all. In addition to the fact that they blend horribly, they also fall out onto your face and stain your face. They are the, these three colors especially will not just wipe away with a brush. If you have your base done and you try and wipe them away with a brush, it's just going to smear all across your face. You really need to wash them off your face because they will stain your, your skin, your base, your whatever. I didn't really notice that until two hours into wearing that green eye look and looking at myself in the mirror and seeing like my, my cheeks looked kind of green. And I don't know if I put my makeup on in the dark that morning or what, how I didn't notice that in the first place, but it was, it was awful. And I had to go through the rest of my day looking like that, which was embarrassing. These are super powdery and that's not necessarily inherently bad, but these are so powdery that the fallout is atrocious. Like I said, some of them stain your face and the pigmentation is not really there for as powdery as they are. I don't mind a super powdery shadow as long as the pigmentation also is amazing and it's not necessarily so with these so like you have to dip in and really really kick off that brush in order to not have fallout all over your face uh also because they are so powdery they work better in my opinion without a primer because you don't have any kind of creamy or tacky base that they will just stick to and work through. I did wear primer most days with it, but I made sure to definitely lay down a couple layers, not just one, a couple layers of like I'd lay down a translucent translucent powder first and then I would lay down uh, this this shade here was always my base shade it's called rain it was always my base shade in my eye looks so I'd lay down a couple layers of powder before actually going in and trying to put powder on again because it just didn't it wanted to stick so with that being said it does work better with a primer for length of time that you can wear it, uh, but it works better on its own with no primer for blendability purposes. The silver in this palette is awful. It, it swatches well, but it goes onto your face more like a glitter. It falls out all over your face when you're putting it on. It falls out all over your face throughout the day and eventually just looks like nothing on your eyes in my opinion, even with a primer underneath it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work well. It's not a great, it's not a great silver. When you try and blend it out, it just blends away. It's not a great silver. The first ingredient in this palette is talc. The third one is mica. If you have a sensitivity to either one of those, this is probably not the palette for you. The total ounces on this is 0.77 ounces or 22 grams and there are 20 eyeshadows. So that's a little bit more than one gram of product per eyeshadow pan. It's roughly the same size as a ColourPop shadow and they, they really do look to be the same size as a ColourPop shadow. It's not a bad palette. I really did enjoy it. Uh, some of my favorite colors in here were this one here, which is this really pretty just um, burgundy shimmer color right right there. Really pretty burgundy shimmer color. I loved that color. 
Uh, I also really, really loved this one here, which is called Lord, and it is kind of a uh, lavender, yet looks pink, gray. It looked so pretty with this brown look that I created and then put that all over my lid. And it kind of gave it like this really like purple-esque feel to this all brown look, which was weird for me. And then the standout shade for me was this one Throne, which is the duochrome, which I didn't really realize was a duochrome until after I had put it on my brow bone. So I put it on my brow bone thinking that it would be a really pretty, just kind of like lightning shade up on my brow bone because it really does kind of look just like almost white in the pan and then I got it on there and it was dual chrome blue lavender and I was like oh god that is on my brow bone hmm but I loved it it actually turned out really super pretty I loved the eye look I actually think I wore it in the video that I did uh, for my two-year anniversary which includes a giveaway so if you guys haven't went and watched that video I'll go ahead and link it up in the cards go watch it there is a giveaway going on from from now until uh, September 4th my birthday at which point I will pull a winner but I love that eye look. I thought it was beautiful and I ended up putting that brow bone shade also in the inner corner of my eye just to kind of pull it all together but it was beautiful. I loved it. It was so pretty and I did it with that green, the green shade right here also in there and this green shade is also one of my favorites in here but it kind of looks more yellow on the eye than it does green and I really, really, really wish that I could just find this chartreuse green right there in an eye color that actually performs as a chartreuse green on my eye but it seems like that that's uber difficult so I'm going to show you the swatches now I did do the swatches take a picture of them so I will put the pictures in here for you to look at while I talk to you about what these shadows are so the first set is the first 10 shadows in the palette so the first top two rows the first color there is Rain. It is a really creamy, just cream colored base, really a flesh tone for me. And I used it every single day to set my primer on the days that I wore primer. The next one is Majesty. It is a kind of a warm toned brown color and it is a matte. Then you have Lord, which is one of my favorites in the palette. It is kind of a lavender-esque brown bronzy gray color and it is a shimmer then lady which is very much a bubblegum pink matte then you have regal which is a matte burgundy and then you have crown which is this pretty chartreuse green shimmer color then you have duchess which is a nice dark deep brown matte and then you have imperial which is a really like subdued golden color and it is a shimmer. Monarch is a really olive complected, <laughs> olive complected, olive toned green matte. Enchanted is your black matte in the palette. This next set is the last two rows in the palette, the last 10 shades and the first one is Throne. That is the really pretty duochrome shimmer that is blue with a purple shift. And then you have Palace, which swatches nicely, but this is the taupe that just kind of disappears on your skin. High Tea, which is the silver, and that is a shimmer. Empress, which is a just a really nice medium toned brown color. Then you have Aristocat, Aristocat, Aristocrat, which is a bronzy golden shimmer. And you have Primrose, which is a really pretty milky peachy matte. And you have Prince, which is a nice ruddy, perfect orange red terracotta brown. And then you have Honor, which is a beautiful rose gold shimmer. And you have Emperor, which is honestly this really perfect mustard yellow brown that is very unique to my collection. And then you have Princess, which is a nice burgundy shimmer. 
So as you guys heard, there are quite a few colors in this palette that are really unique to my collection. This is the Emperor color that is that nice, perfect uh, yellow brown, almost baby poop brown almost, uh, that is very unique to my collection. I don't think I have it anywhere else. This color here, which is Prince, is a really per pretty perfect terracotta brown color that's like orange red and it's just beautiful. This is a really beautiful brown color. You guys saw some of the other uh, colors that I called out earlier that I just love. I love, love, love this palette. I am really super happy I picked it up. So initially when I saw this palette at Ulta, I really wasn't going to get it. I wasn't interested. The only two shadow shadows in here that really called my name were these two here. And I was like, I'm not spending $18 on a palette for two colors that are calling my name. The rest of it just doesn't seem like colors I would like. Like I said earlier, it is mostly a cool toned shadow palette and I don't typically do cool tones. And then I saw it at Marshall's for seven bucks. And I thought, well, why not? We'll just try it. It is a palette that kind of spoke to me before. I was, I had this, like, it piqued my interest just a little bit. So seven bucks, sure, I'll pay seven bucks for it. I love it. Every shadow in here is super, super creamy. And even with the blendability problems that it tends to have sometimes, I still think that it is a beautiful palette. And I have this love affair with BH Cosmetics right now that I'm really not sure where it comes from. Like I have several of their palettes and I really do love them. You guys saw the BH Cosmetics. Uh, it's my Ray Ray palette as well as the Weekend Festival palette I've done in these these palette roulette videos and I really kind of love them. I have one of their foundations. I have one of their concealers. I don't find that they're a horrible brand and for drugstore for the cost of these, I mean, $18 is less than a dollar per shade, which is amazing. And they're really good. So it's definitely not a palette that I will get rid of. But what I will say about this palette is I did enjoy it enough that I think because of it, I might get rid of my, it's, my Ray Ray palette. And the reason why is because it does share a lot of tones of brown that that palette has as well as the deep burgundy. The only one that that one has that this one doesn't really have is that purple that's in it and that really that white gold shift duochrome. So I might see if I can, you know, pop those out of that palette and keep those colors in my single my singles, my magnetic palette. But other than that, like I think this one might outbid it's my Ray Ray and my BH Cosmetics palettes. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. The purple that's in the it's my Ray Ray is not a, not a purple that is unique to my collection. It's just a really pretty purple. But that you know, white to gold shift powder that's in there in both highlight and eyeshadow form is pretty spectacular, even though it's not, my, it's not my favorite color, but it is pretty spectacular and pretty unique to my, my collection. So I might pop those out. With that being said, you guys should have seen my pictures. You've seen my swatches. We went through them all. We talked a little bit about the palette. I hope that you enjoyed all that. We are going to pick our next palette. I do use the Decide Now app from the app store. I do have a Samsung Note 9. So I play with the Android app store. If you have an iPhone, I know that they have a like Wheel of Fortune type app on your app store as well. I only know that because the lady who inspired this this series for me, her name, her channel name is Dana Bo. She has an Apple phone and she uses the same kind of app from her app store on her phone. So what you do is you just download the app. You put all of the things that you want the app to decide between into a Wheel of Fortune and then you just spin by pressing that center blue button. When we do these palette roulettes, I take all those palettes out of it. And as we put, as I bring new palettes into my collection, I do put those palettes into this wheel as soon as they're hauled in. So with that being said, we do have, I sat down yesterday and counted them. We still have 60 palettes. 
holy cow <laughs> and this is what number 37 for me that's insane I also have seven palettes down there from GMC that I haven't decided what to do with yet that I haven't put into here or not I also have decluttered a, a couple of palettes just through knowing that I never wanted to use them so <sighs> We have so much still to go through, but that's okay. I'm enjoying this. I love this. I hope that eventually you guys will love it as well. <laughs> so we are going to go ahead and spin this wheel and pick our next palette. All right, it picked the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. I am super excited about that. I'm going to go get it real quick. So this is the next palette that we will be using. It is the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. This is what the palette looks like. And the back of it looks like this. It does have the little holes in here so that you can pop out her shadows. This is a hard pan Natasha Denona shadow palette. And this is also her first one of this size. So she does have the really big palettes that are like $129 or then the $200 and $38 ones, and then she has the little tiny five pan mini shadows that cost anywhere from $25 to $48, and then she has this guy. Oh, uh, I am so excited to use this. Let me not blind you. I am so excited to use this palette. I think that it is going to be perfect for this time of year. It kind of has some fall ass colors in there, but it also has a lot of like really pretty, vibrant beautiful summer colors and I'm so excited to use it. I haven't even touched this palette yet. So, oh, except for this one. I swatched this one a lot. I swatched it. It's just so pretty. So I'm excited to use this palette. I cannot wait to come back and review it with you guys. If you are interested in seeing that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time I upload. I do typically upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and it is typically at 9 a.m. every single one of those days. Sometimes that Friday video doesn't get kicked out until Sunday just because of my crazy work-life schedule, and sometimes that 9 a.m. time frame is a little bit later because I am a techie dummy. <laughs> uh, since we're talking about that, this is the fourth time I've recorded this video because the first time I recorded the video, I didn't record it at all. I didn't press record. I thought I pressed record. Um, and then the second and third time I flubbed up all before I got to the picking the palette, thank God, but not before I thought I got through almost the entirety of the video because I'm a dummy. Anyways. <laughs> Hopefully you liked this video enough or liked me or like my content enough that you're considering subscribing to my channel. I hope also that you consider giving it a big thumbs up. It really does help our channels out here in YouTube Nation. Helps me know that you like this. Helps them know that you also are watching. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I cannot wait to come back and discuss the Sunrise Palette with you from Natasha Dodona. And, and until next time, bye guys. Take three, four, if you count the one I didn't freaking record. Pause for the ice cream, man. <laughs>